Okay, everyone. So yesterday we were learning about some uh, vocabulary when we're doing algebraic expressions. Today we're going to learn how to simplify algebraic expressions. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this bank right here. Okay. We have some loose change right here. It tells us the loose change is $1 each. We have some stacks of money. Not quite sure how much money is in there. And we have some cash drawers. Again, not quite sure how much is in there. What I definitely know for sure is that each one of these is a dollar. So this is four times five is 20. So I know that there are $20 in the loose change. However, as I said, we don't know how much is in here. So hmm, what do I use when I don't know something in math? I use a variable to represent an unknown number. I do know that there is eight stacks of cash. So I'm gonna use the variable S for stacks and I'm gonna add eight S, eight times the number of money in each stack. And same thing for the drawers. I know that there's 10 total drawers, not quite sure how much is in each one, but I'm gonna use D to represent the variable for that one. So that's gonna be 10D. So do you not know what S is? Do you not know what D is? This right here would represent my algebraic expression. The constant would be 20, because it's the number by itself. We have two coefficients, eight and 10, and then the variables would be S and D. Let's look at another one. All right, so same type of idea here. We have our loose change, our stacks, and our, ca uh, and our cash drawers. So for the loose change, I have $10 in loose change. I have six stacks of money, so I'm gonna do six S, or six times S, six times the number of stacks. I have one, two, three, four, five cash drawers, so I'm gonna use five D, five times the number of drawers. So now, I want you to try these three on your own. So you're gonna pause the video, take a couple minutes, and I want you to write the algebraic expressions for each one, and then I will go over the answers when you're done. So go ahead and pause the video, please. Okay, welcome back. I'm gonna go over the answers and you can check how you did on your own. So for the first one, I have $8 in loose change. I have six stacks of money, and I have three drawers of money. So check how you did on number one. Okay, for number two, I have $25 in loose change. I have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 times the number of stacks. And I have 12 drawers. So 12 D for drawers. So again, check how you did on that one. And the last one, we have $15 in loose change. We have 12 stacks of money and we have eight cash drawers. So go ahead and take a look, see how you did with those. All right, now we're gonna move on to something called combining like terms. Like terms, is when two or more terms have the same variable. The variable is the letter that represents the number. So in this case, I have an A and an A. Those would be like terms. So 3A and 2A are like terms. 2B and 6B would be like terms because they have the same variable. So we're gonna do something, a cool strategy called the bucket strategy. The buckets are gonna help us to combine like terms and put them together. So in this case, we have an A bucket and a B bucket. So you should be writing this with me. So we have an A bucket and we have a B bucket. In my A bucket, I have 3A and I have a plus 2A and that's really gonna be important, especially when we get into the minuses. So 3A plus 2A and I'm gonna cross them out as I go. Now for the B bucket, I have a plus 2B and a plus 6B. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add straight down. So 2A plus, excuse me, 3A plus 2A is 5A. 2B plus 6B is 8B. And that's my simplified expression, that's it. I cannot go any further because I do not know what the value of A is and I do not know what the value of B is. All I'm doing is simplifying the expression and combining like terms.
All right, here's another example. So in this one, we only have one variable, but I can combine my constants or my numbers, okay? So we're still gonna do a bucket for each. So I'm gonna do this off to the side so I have some more room. I, I need a Y bucket. And for the constants, I'm just gonna use the hashtag symbol. You guys know it as the hashtag symbol, but that's really the number symbol. So I'm gonna do one with a number symbol to represent the constants or the numbers that are by themselves. So in this example, I have a plus three Y and I have a plus four Y. In my number bucket or my constant bucket, I have a 12 and I have a minus two. You've got to put that negative sign in, minus two. So when I go straight down, three Y plus four Y is seven Y. 12 minus two is 10. And I'm done. Again, I cannot go any further. I cannot add seven Y plus 10 because 10 does not have a Y. They have to have the same variable for them to be added together or subtracted. All right, you should be writing these examples down. All right, let's look at the next one. I'm gonna do this one over here. This time I need an X bucket and an N bucket. And if you remember from yesterday, this one does have an imaginary one in front of the X. Go ahead and put that one in there so you know. Remember, a variable by itself always has an imaginary one in front of it. All right, so I need an X bucket and an N bucket. In my X bucket, I have three X. Oops. And I have a plus one X. In my N bucket, I have a plus 2N and a plus 4N. Again, I'm going to add down. This is why it's so important to have the 1 in there because it's not 3 plus nothing. It's 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1 is 4X. 2N plus 4N is 6N. All right, last example. So in this case, I have an F bucket and a B bucket. So here's my F and my B. So for the F, I have 12F and plus 3F. In the B bucket, I have plus 9B. And think about it careful, minus 5B, so you've got to pay attention to that symbol in front of the number. So this is minus 5B. 12F plus 3F is 15F. 9B minus 5B is 4B. And that is my answer. All right. Now you're going to go ahead and do your assignment on Desmos and let Ms. Sunkel know or Ms. Lee know if you have any questions.